office of the Always Believe House. Oh, today we're going to factor quadratics with a number in front of the x squared, and it is going to be fun. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so let's go through. And a magical whiteboard appears, and today's lesson is going to be a little bit tougher than yesterday because we're going to make the number bigger. Really quickly, this right here is the standard form of a quadratic. Standard form of quadratic, okay? In the next unit, we're going to look at what these graphs look like, okay? The A, the B, and the C will all do something to what that graph is. Kind of like MX plus B with a line. This is going to graph a curve, okay? Just to let you know what's going to happen in the next unit. This will graph a curve, and the curve is going to cross the x-axis twice, okay? Most of the time, the curve will cross the x-axis twice. When you factor it, you're able to find those x-intercepts, which are called the zeros. This is where this is heading. Calculus is the study of those curves, okay? So what you're learning now is the base arithmetic. If you're going into engineering, okay, this is like doing the integers of calculus. So this is like hugely important for a lot of y'all that are going into engineering. Okay, so let's go down. I'm going to show you how to do these steps. Okay, notice on this problem here, there's a number in front of the x squared term, but 2 does not divide into 5 or 3. We cannot factor out the 2 as the GCF. Okay, so we're going to take this 2 and this 3 and multiply. And 2 times 3 is 6. Now that instead of getting the factors of 3, we're going to get the factors of 6. The factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3, and we want to add them up and get 5, just like we did yesterday. So today's lesson is exactly the same, except you're not getting the factors of the C term. You're multiplying that A term. Remember, it's AX squared plus BX plus C. You're multiplying the A and the C first and then writing that number down and factoring that number. And it's going to add or subtract and give you the B term. You're doing that every single time. Now then, since we're multiplying, the number we're getting the factor of is going to get bigger, and this is going to get harder. You're going to have to use the calculator. Now then, on this problem, the 2 and the 3 work, don't they? So I'm going to write down 2 and 3, and then since the opposite of multiply is divide, we're going to divide the by this, but we're watch what's going to happen. We're going to put 2x and 2x down. Now then, the left fraction will simplify. So 2 divided by 2 is just 1 over x. This right here, remember we got to put plus and plus, so these right here turn into your factors. Okay? Kind of hard. We, first time you've ever done this, you're like, oh, you'll see this as we go. When you put these down, one of the factors will simplify. Now then, if you multiply 1 and 3, you get the 3. If you multiply x and 2x, you get the 2x squared. So the numerators multiply to give you the C term. The denominators multiply to give you the A term. The parentheses are going to be x plus 1 and 2x plus 3. Now then, if I were to do the full method on that, I would get 2x plus 3x. The 2 and the 3 are these numbers right here. Okay, so the first numbers you write down are going to be your arch numbers. Those are the outside of the inside terms. Then obviously x times 2x is 2x squared, and 1 times 3 is 3. These are the factors of that quadratic. Okay, remember your factors are going to be binomials, right? And we're going to use those to get the zeros in the next unit, okay? Very important. You're able to do this. This is one of the most important things you're learning in Algebra 1. Let's go to the next one. Okay, on the next, remember, we cannot factor out the 5, can we? 17 and 6 don't divide by 5. So I'm going to take the A term and the C term, multiply them, and get 30. Now then, I want the factors of 30 that add and give me 17. So I'm going to go down 1 times 30 doesn't work, 2 times 15 works. Now then, this is the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave spaces between them. Now then, this number right here is 5m squared. I'm going to write that down twice, and it will simplify, okay? One of the, at least one of the fractions will simplify. The 15 and the 5 both divide by 5, don't they? And if I do that, I get 3 over m. 
So I'm going to take this one out. And notice right here, they're both, or they're both minus and minus. Forgot to do that. Okay. This right here and this right here are going to be my parentheses. Negative 2 times negative 3 is my positive 6. 5n times m is my 5m squared. The opposite of multiply is divide. That's why we put these on the bottom, just like we did yesterday. But today, one of the fractions will simplify, okay? So on this one right here, I divided by 5, and I got the negative 3 and the m. Now then, we're going to go back and make our parentheses. Remember, you got to make these combine and give you this, don't you? So I forgot to do that. we got to put a negative 2 and a minus 15, don't we? Okay, and the negative 15 turned into the minus 3. So my parentheses are going to be 5m minus 2 parentheses, and then m minus 3. And notice if I did my arches, I would get negative 2 and negative 15, which are right here and right here, aren't they? Okay, so the numbers you first write down are going to be the arch numbers that give you that middle term or your b term. Okay, and then the numerators multiply and give you c. The denominators multiply and give you the a. Ho, 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 ho. Let's continue on. Okay, on this problem here, 6 won't factor into 5 or 4. 2 and 3 won't work either. So we're going to take the 6 and the 4, and we're going to multiply them. 6 times 4 is 24. Now then remember, when you subtract, it's harder. We want to subtract and get 5. I'm going to go ahead and write down all the factors of 24. So 1 and 24, 2 and 12, and 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. The 3 and the 8 work, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this, or let's just put it over here. I'm going to put 3 and 8. Remember, this sign goes to the biggest one. What do I do to negative 8 to get a minus 5? I need to add 3, don't I? Plus 3 minus 8 is a negative 5. If I put negative 3, I'm not subtracting, I'm going to add, aren't I? If that sign's minus in front of the C, the signs will be opposite. Now then, this right here will be my 6Y. It will go on the bottom. Now then, notice these both simplify. I could divide these by 3. If I divide those by 3, technically you could punch 3 divided by 6 on the calculator and it will simplify. So if you were to punch 3 divided by 6, you would get a plus 1 over a 2y. So the 3 over 6y will simplify to 1 over 2y. Now then, these divide by 2. Okay, so negative 8 divided by 2 would be negative 4. 6y divided by 2 would be 3y. These right here will be my parentheses. Remember, if you multiply the numerators, plus 1 times negative 4 is the negative 4. 2y times 3y is the minus or plus 6y squared. And the arch numbers, when we write this down, okay, so we're going to have 2y plus 1 and 3y minus 4. The arch numbers would be 3 and negative 8, which is what I have here and here. Okay. That's how all that works. So step one is to multiply the A term and the C term. Step two is to look at this sign and figure out the factors that give you that B term, that middle term. In this problem, it was 3 and 8. Step three is to write down the 3 and 8. Step four is to take this sign and put it in front of the biggest factor. Step five is to take a lot of steps. That's why this is hard. Take that term without the exponent, put it on the bottom, simplify, and this turns into your, your parentheses or your factors, okay? Remember, you're getting the factors of these quadratics. Ho, 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 ho. Still, y'all are going to have to see a few of these before you get it down. Let's go to the next one. This one, we're going to use the calculator for the factors, okay? So we're going to take the 12 and the 5 and multiply, because we can't factor out anything because 11 and 5 are prime. So 12 times 5 is 60. We want the factors of 60 that subtract and give us 11, don't they? And it's going to be a plus 11, right? Okay, so let's use our calculators. We want to get the factors of 50 or 60 that subtract and give us 11. The factors of 60 that subtract and give us 11. So we're going to go to graph. Make sure nothing's on here. Remember, the shortcut is tab, or you can hit menu. Graph is 3. Function is 1. Okay, and we're going to do 60 divided by x. We want the factors of 60. And you probably won't see anything because, like, well, you barely see it here, okay? Now then hit Control-T. Don't worry about what that graph looks like. And we have our table. We want to subtract and get 11, don't we? Subtract and get 11. 
30 minus 2 is 911. 20 minus 3 is 911. The 15 and 4 work, don't they? So I only need the factor that works. So I don't need to write down all the factors of 60. Notice all of those x's and y's multiply and give me 60. So 4 and 15 are the factors I want. So I'm going to go back to here, put 4 and 15 down. The middle sign is plus, so the 15 is plus. What do I do to 15 to get 11? The 4 has got to be minus, don't it? Now then, we're going to put this on the bottom. And you don't put C squared, you just put the 12C. Okay, so since we multiply, the odds of the multiplies divide, and this right here is going to be really important when we finish it up. These divide by 4, don't they? Okay, so I can take both of these and divide them by 4. If you punch negative 4 divided by 12, the calculator will simplify the fraction. This is going to turn into negative 1 over 3C, and this will divide by 3, won't it? And you'll get, and this should be 12C also, so you'll get 5 over 4C, won't you? A plus 5 over 4C. This turns into your parentheses, doesn't it? One, negative 1 times 5 is by negative 5. 3C times 4C is by 12C squared. And the negative 4 and the 15 will be my arch numbers. So let's write our answer down. I'm going to put the parentheses. My first parentheses is 3C minus 1. My second parentheses is 4C plus 5. Okay, now then notice my arch numbers are negative 4, which is right here. 3 times 5 is 15, it's right here in it. This all works out. If I multiply negative 1 and 5, negative 1 and 5, I get my negative 5. If I multiply 3C and 4C, I get my 12C squared. So step 1 is to multiply the A and the C. Step 2, either get the factor or use the calculator and find the number that factors it, subtract or add and give you that B term, right? Then you put your A term on the bottom of the fraction and you simplify it. The simplified fractions turn into your parentheses. Piece of cake. This is the easiest possible way to do this. Lots of ways to do it. I'm 30 years teaching. I've never seen an easier way. The only hard thing is that this number can get huge. So you have to use the calculator. Okay. Now then, pause the video and see if you can do this one. Okay, we're back. Let's see if you can do it. Okay, step one was to multiply four and five, right? If you multiply four and five, you get 20. Now then, we want the factors of 20 that subtract and give us 19, and that's one times 20 in it. The middle sign's minus, and it goes to the biggest factor. So negative 20 plus what's negative 19? We're going to have to add 1, right? Plus 1 minus 20 is negative 19. Now then put the 4x on the bottom. The opposite of multiply is divide. The first fraction does not simplify. So I'm going to write it down again. Plus 1 over 4x. The second fraction divides by 4. Okay? If you punch negative 20 divided by 4 on the calculator, it's going to simplify it for you. So we're going to get negative 5 over x. Now then, this and this are my parentheses. So the answer is going to be 4x plus 1, and you can put them in any order, and x minus 5. Ho, 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 ho. If we do our arches, we'll get plus 1 minus 20, which is exactly what we have here and here, and that gives us the negative 19 in the middle, doesn't it? Wow. Amazing. Oh, oh, oh. You would not believe how I was taught to do this. It's trial and error, and it takes a long time. This is the simplest way to do this. Let's go to number two. Okay, number two, what are we going to do first? Multiply the six and two. Now then, I'm going to pause. See, hit the pause button. See if you can do the rest. Okay, we're back. So we want the factors of 12 that add and give us 7, right? Which is going to be 3 and 4. This plus goes to the biggest factor. What do you do to plus 4 to get 7? We need to add 3. And then the 6K goes on the bottom. Now then we're going to simplify. If you punch 3 divided by 6 on your calculator, the calculator will do it. These will divide by 3. So we're going to end up with plus 1 over 2K. These will divide by 2. So we'll end up with plus 2 over 3K. These are our parentheses. It's not that difficult, is it? So we'll get 2K plus 1. 
and 3K plus 2. Remember that taste meter? This in Algebra 1 is the tastiest thing you can do. Okay? This is like the zenith of taste in Algebra 1. Because this is a little bit harder than what we did yesterday. Let's go to number 3. Okay? Step 1, you can't factor out anything in here because the 3 doesn't divide by 2. So we're going to take the 8 and the 3 and multiply and get 24. We want the factors of 24 that subtract and give us 10. So I'm going to pause the video, see if you can do it. Okay, we're back. Oh, let's see how you did here. So we want to subtract and get 10. That's going to be 2 times 12 in it. Eventually, you won't have to write all the factors out. Okay, you can also do 24 divided by x on the calculator and just look for the right one, right? Now then, the last sign's minus, that goes to your biggest factor. Negative 12, and what am I going to do to 2 to get to negative 10? If I do minus 2, I'm going to get negative 14, aren't I? So I need a plus 2. Now then, my first term is 8y, so I'm going to put 8y on the bottom of both of them, and these simplify, don't they? If you want, punch 2 divided by 8, negative 12 divided by 8. It gives you your fractions, okay? The top fraction will divide by 2, so we're going to end up with plus 1 over 4y. The second one will divide by 4 and we'll end up with negative 3 over 2y, and that right there is your parentheses. 4y plus 1, and 2y minus 3. Oh, 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 you have no idea how easy this is compared to doing this trial and error, okay? This is pretty simple, but it's still complex because you've got to get that factor. The key right here is to get those numbers. You've got to get the factors, okay? Continuing on, let's do number 4. Okay, what two numbers are we going to multiply? Excellent. We're going to multiply the 3 and the 10. And 3 won't factor into any of these, will it? So we're going to do that and get 30. Now then, we want the factors of 30 that subtract and give us a minus 1. So if I did 30 divided by x, let me do that, control T. You're going to have to do this a lot. Then delete, delete, delete. Think of something bad. Hit enter. That deletes your bad memory. Then hit uh, tab. And then we want 30, right? Wasn't it 30? Yeah, 30. So 30 divided by x. 30 divided by x. Hit enter. And then hit control T. We want to subtract and get 1, don't we? 15 minus 2 is not 1. 10 minus 3 is not 1. 4 doesn't work because it's a decimal. But what about the 5 and the 6? That's it, isn't it? So the 5 and the 6 are the factors we want. So we're going to go back to the problem. Put 5 and 6 down. The middle, the last sign's minus. That goes to the biggest number. Negative 6 plus, what do you do to 5 to negative 6 to get negative 1? you got a plus 5, don't you? Plus 5 minus 6 is negative 1. The 3W goes on the bottom. The opposite of multiply is divide. The left side won't simplify, will it? So we're going to write it down again. And then these divide by 3. And you would get negative 2 over W. Now remember, your denominators multiply to give you the A term, the numerators multiply and give you the C term, and then when we write our parentheses, the arches will be these, won't they? So our parentheses are going to be 3W plus 5 and W minus 2. And if we did our arches, we would get plus 5 and minus 6, wouldn't we? Oh, 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 oh. This is more power. Oh. Make sure you can multiply. Make sure you can multiply, okay? The better you can multiply, the easier you can factor. Well, let's go to number five. Okay, we cannot factor a number out of here, right? Okay, so we're going to multiply the 10 and the 2. Excellent. So we're going to do 2 times 10 and get 20. And we want those five factors to subtract and give us a 1, don't we? So 1 times 20 won't work. 2 and 10 won't work. 3 doesn't go into 20. Ding, ding, ding. 4 and 5. So I'm going to write down 4 and 5. The last sign's minus that goes to the biggest number. Negative 5, what do I do to 4 to get negative 1? I'm going to plus 1, aren't I? Then the 10p is going to go on the bottom. Now then, if you want, on your calculator, hit 4 divided by 10 and negative 5 divided by 10. That's what your fractions will be. I'm going to simplify it by hand because I love simplifying fractions. Divide these by 2 and you get plus 2 over 5p. Divide these by 5, and you get negative 1 over 2p, 
and these are your parentheses, aren't they? So the parentheses are going to be 5p plus 2 and 2p minus 1. Ho, 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 ho. F-U-N, fun, fun, fun. It doesn't get any better than this in Algebra 1 this year. It just doesn't. This is as good as it gets. Oh, 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 oh. And y'all are being taught with more power. Oh, let's go on. The last one we're going to do together, then I'll do one on your homework. Go over here, 9, 3, and 2. They will not simplify, okay? First thing you want to do is see if you can pull out a GCF like we did yesterday. Since they will not simplify, we're going to multiply 9 and 2. These numbers are pretty small. By my pre-AP classes, the numbers are like 120, 180. They had to get the factors of really big numbers. So 9 times 2 is 18. We want to subtract and get 3. Okay, so 1 and 18 doesn't work. 2 and 9 won't subtract and give me 3. 3 and 6 work, doesn't it? So I'm going to use the 3 and the 6. Now then, the last sign's minus. That goes to my biggest number. And then negative 6, what do I need to do to it to get to the minus 3? I need to plus 3. So plus 3 minus 6 is my negative 3 in it. Put the 9x on the bottom. The opposite of multiply is divide. That's why we do that. We multiply the a and the c. Now we got to divide to get go back to our parentheses. So both of these will simplify. If you punch 3 divided by 9 on the calculator, it gives you the simplified fraction. You can divide these by 3 and get plus 1 over x. You can divide these by 3 and get negative 2 over 3x, okay? This should be 3x right here. I'm sorry about that. So we got plus 1 over 3x, negative 2 over 3x, right? So these turn into our fact factors, 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. And it doesn't matter the order you write them in. Remember, what you just wrote down are the factors. <clears throat> and if you do your arches, you get plus 3 and you get minus 6. These numbers right here will be the arch numbers that give you that middle term. That's your outside term and your inside term in the full method, okay? Turn the page! I'm going to do one of these problems for you. Is there anyone with double letters? There is not. Let me do the one with the biggest number. Okay, I'm going to do two of them between 10 and 15. These are a little bit more difficult. So we're going to do two steps here. Okay, and I'm going to do two of them. Okay, on this problem here, all these numbers are even. I can divide by two, but four works also. So I'm going to divide all these by 4. Okay, I know 4 works. Punch 52 divided by 4 on your calculator to see if it works. Now then, the 4 drops. Now we're going to divide. So 5n squared minus 13n minus 6. Okay, so notice I made the number smaller by pulling out the GCF. These right here are going to be the hardest ones you got to do today because you've got to factor out first. You're going to take the 5 and 6 and multiply. And I want the factors that subtract to give me 13. That's 2 and 15, did it? Okay, remember, do 30 divided by x and look for it. Those subtract to give me the 13. The last sign's minus, so that's going to be my 15. And I need the 2 to be positive. Plus 2 minus 15 is negative 13. Now then, the 5n squared goes on the bottom, or 5n. These two won't factor. They won't simplify. But these you can divide by 5. And you would get negative 3 over 1n or n, right? That's my parentheses. So my parentheses is 5n plus 2 and n minus 3. Ho, 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 ho. F-U-N, fun, fun, fun. Oh, and let's do one more. Let's do 14. Okay, let's see. Let me look over them. Um, uh, let's do 13. Okay, on 13. Okay, 3 works into all these. Do y'all know how to tell a 3 goes into a number? If you add the digits up and they divide by 3, 3 works. So 15, 1 plus 5 is 6. 3 goes into 6. 3 goes into 15. 1 plus, nine, one plus 8 is 9. 3 goes into 9. 3 goes into 18. 2 and 4 work. 2 won't work because the 15 is odd, right? Okay, so we're going to divide all these by 3. Okay, so I'm going to get oh, 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 3 parentheses, 5y squared minus 6y minus 8. Oh, Now then I'm going to multiply my A term and my C term, right? 
That's going to give me 40, and I want to subtract and get the negative 6. So let's do this on the calculator one more time. Control-T to get rid of the table. Delete, delete, think of something bad. I got my bad thought. Delete, delete, delete. The bad thought's gone. Enter. Now then, tab to get the function up, and we got 20, don't we? Or 40, and we want to subtract and get 6. So 40 divided by x, hit enter, and then hit control T. Don't worry about what that graph looks like. And we want to subtract and get 6, don't we? 2 and 20 don't work. 3 doesn't go into 40, does it? But this one right here works, doesn't it? The 10 and the 4. So we want the 4 and the 10, don't we? So we're going to go back to here, put 4 and 10 down, and we're going to divide by the 5y. Before we do that, the 10's got to be minus, and the 4's going to be plus, right? Plus 4 minus 10 is my negative 6. This one will not simplify. So I'm going to write it down again. Over here, I could divide by 5, so I'm going to get negative 2 over y, and these are my parentheses. 5y plus 4, and y minus 2. Okay, you have a blast. Y'all please listen. Do these problems. If you need more, ask your teacher. You've got to get repetition down. When we put all of this together, it's going to be harder than the exponent unit. This is not easy to do, especially, like I said, when you snowball it all together, factor the GCF, factor A, it's hard. So make sure you're doing the problems. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember, you are amazing. You are created to do wonderful things. And you are awesome.